Welcome to One Insight. My name is Rich Litvin. I grew up in London and I now live in LA. And this is a podcast for extraordinary top performers. You see, I've coached some of the most successful and talented people on the planet. I see what most people cannot see, and I dare to say what most people wouldn't dare to say. And what I know about success is that on the other side of it, it can actually be lonely. You can feel like more of an imposter the more successful you become. And when you're the most interesting person in the room, you're actually in the wrong room. I coach around insight. Life looks one way, something happens, the world looks different, and your entire world changes. It can happen in an instant. And this podcast is called One Insight because a single insight can change everything. In this episode, you're going to hear me work with Corinne Sandler. Super successful entrepreneur, won awards for her businesses, highly successful, had many employees, top clients in the industry. And, and it doesn't matter how successful you are, you can't see your own gifts. What I can do is help draw them out. And, and by the end of this conversation, Corinne is moved. She, she is literally moved to silence and has no words left. All she could say is, wow. It's the power of being able to draw out from my clients their stories and articulate them back to them in a way that like they hear them for the first time. It's so powerful. Enjoy listening to this conversation. Hi, Corinne. Thank you for joining me on this conversation. Um, my intention today is to have a little bit of fun with you and to draw out some of the stories that are deep inside of you, to create a way for you to speak into the world who you are and what you do, that feels natural, feels effortless, might become the copy for your website. But it's seeing some of the things that you do, that you've done for really much of your life, that, that are hard for us to see for ourselves, because it's just who we are and what we do. So I won't say any more to explain it. It will come out as I ask you some questions. You ready to have some fun? Yes. Hi, Rich. Sure. Okay, cool. All right. So let me ask you this question. And, and for this question, um, I'm going to need you to put humility to one side. So don't worry about, um, this might sound like bragging, this might sound like showing off, but I need a couple of your headlines. The headlines are the kind of things we've done in our life that have people go, wow. Now, initially when I ask people that, kind of question, they'll say something like, you know, raising my three kids, or I went through a divorce and it was really traumatic and I came out the other side and I'm thriving. And that's not to take away from any of those stories, but that's not what I'm looking for in this moment. What I'm looking for are a couple of the stories from when you were at work prior to becoming a coach and consultant. I want to hear a couple of things that you did that Back then, maybe you were known for this. Oh, we'll call Corinne in when this situation is happening. Or even more specific, well, I went to work with this team and these were the specific results we created when I was leading here, when I was doing this here. What's the first one that comes to mind? Or, or some of the awards, I, I guess, that, I, that I've won. I've won um, top 100 Woman Entrepreneur of the Year Award th three times in a row. Um, that comes to mind. Um, fastest growing company in, in Canada. Uh, I've won that award uh, twice in the, in the last 10 years. So th those was that were your own company? Th that's correct. That was my own company. Um, Tell me about that company. So... That was a, a, a company, um, a market research company um, mm -hmm. that I built from, from ground up. Um, yeah, it, the, the thing is, Rich, it's not really, I did really well within the company, but I, I lost interest and got... So, so hold, hold okay. on there for a second. We'll come okay. to that. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Isn't it interesting though? It's so, it's so hard for us to acknowledge those things that we, we feel proud of or that other people acknowledge us for. We already are ready to sweep you under the carpet and move on to I the am. challenges. Yeah, I guess. It's very human. It's very human. So um, I always love the way you pronounce entrepreneur too. So 
so tell, tell me tell me one other thing that you've done in your career prior to becoming a coach or consultant maybe one of the results that that company had or yeah tell me something um what we i i, I grew you know we opened up in the u.s uh I, I had just over 30 employees. We won um, many uh, best methodology. We, we, we developed great research methodology and, and, and won some uh, industry-specific awards for the methodology. Um, I, I, I would say, you know, gaining some tier one clients, um, uh, give me give me a couple of names of those those clients that you used to work uh, with. Yeah, a, a Bayer, PepsiCo, um, a Google, Yahoo, uh, SC Johnson, Sony. Those are okay. yeah. That's great. That's great. That, now we're talking. That, those are what I would call headlines. That's great. Okay. Um, Going to ask you a, a, a question just to throw your thinking for a second. What were you doing when you were six years old? And I mean, six years, give or take. And I mean, what did you love to do when you were around six years old? I loved to play soccer. Um, I loved to ride my, my bike. Um, I was a tomboy. And yeah, you know, I, I was never, I was never a, a, a little girl that, you know, played house house or you know dog. for me it was uh, funny I used to I used to play a game called office office you know, but then I I was in my little office but um sports I I think were really important to me and um from what I can recall yeah at, at six that was sport for sure soccer running so let's just break that down a bit because I want to find out a little bit more precisely because there are lots of little girls who play soccer and ride their bikes and don't do the things that, that girls are you know, traditionally supposed to do. Um, there are lots of kids who play sports. What was it that made you light up in particular? Uh, winning, because I mean, from, from a sport perspective, Yes, I, I, I was a great runner as a little girl and I, I like to win races. I, 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 I was competitive. Um, yeah. that, that lit me up. Yeah, that's what I was curious about. Um, do you know where that came from? For, for some of us, it comes from, you know, we want to uh, prove ourselves to our, our mom or going to show our dad that we're just as capable as he is or yeah what's the nodding tell me 100% um, I had an older brother who was an inc incredible soccer player I, I, I grew up in South Africa and it was quite a it's a chauvinistic society especially then in the 1970s and it really was all about what you know you did more Boys played sport, girls didn't really. It was very different to, to how things are now. And for me, I felt like I did always need to prove myself um, to climb up on that pedestal to get attention because it was always about my older brother's successes. Yeah. Um, were you a rule breaker? Yeah, I would say I, I was called a, a rebel. Yes, yes. Rebel. Okay, that's great. And I'm curious now, play that one out from six through your career. Where was being a rebel, a rule breaker, proving yourself, getting attention, actually one of the secrets to your success? I, I think... A lot of it, what my independence. So my independence. I think one of the things for sure was immigration. When I, so gr nobody let, leaves home to go to university in South Africa. It's a very different mindset, like North America. And I left home immediately and, and went and went to the UK, um, which was a, 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 bit, a big shocker. Um, and all I did, I just I travelled. I didn't I didn't really care. And then I think for a rule breaker was I dropped out of university. 
and I never finished. Mm. Um, when I look back now, I realize why at the time, I don't think it was evident, but it was more fear-based. Um, I did eventually go back and, 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 and finish a long time later, but I, I um, that, that was one, leaving home, I, I felt running away, I guess, escaping, leaving university, wanting to just constantly travel. Um, so let me ask, because that story is very familiar to me. I also left at 18 to go to university, almost never went back traveled constantly always have lived in lots of different countries i have a high need for freedom that's that's a brilliant way to put it yes yes and 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 i as you know i've always been an entrepreneur and i always define entrepreneurship as freedom for self and others i've always defined it that way it's the ability to have freedom of to spend the money or make the money I want to, to work the hours I want and to influence the people I want. And so, yeah, a, a freedom is, it's, I guess that's, you, you hit the nail on the head. Yes. Yeah. Nice. Tell me, what did you struggle with? most throughout your working career? What was probably the internal thing that was holding you back the most? I felt like, and I still do, I, 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 an intellectual fraud. I never felt that I was academically had enough credentials to do what I was doing. I never felt like I had enough knowledge or skill set to have, I, I believe my company was grew and developed by pure luck by hiring the right people. Um, and now as I'm entering to be a coach, I have the exact same, I have the exact same feeling. I, 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 I wonder if I will ever be able to coach like you do so naturally because like, do I have that skill? It's self doubt. And so let me ask what I heard underneath that is one of the superpowers you have is understanding people enough to hire the right people. Because in most organizations, millions of dollars are spent and lost by hiring the wrong people all sorts of chaos is sown by hiring the wrong people. It sounds like you have a superpower in seeing people, understanding people, knowing them, hiring them. I did. I did for sure. But I, I also sabotaged that later on in the years and got bored and left the company and hired the wrong people to run it. Would I be right then that you have a low threshold for boredom it's fun when you can be a rebel, when it's exciting, but as soon as it becomes sustainable and it's just it's how it is now, even though it's successful, you're bored and you want to run to the next project. 100%. It's always been a downfall for me. I, I, I constantly need to create. And when I'm not creating and it's not coming fast enough, I lose interest. And one of the scariest things that's going into this new coaching career is and I keep reminding myself Rich's words slow down to speed up is I love creating new programs and putting things out there but I'm not creating the clients fast enough to keep me excited so I question my ability skill set etc and this has been a theme throughout your life, right? This is this, it, it feels new now, but now we're looking back and we can see, we can track it all the way back. This is someone who's been a rebel, who loves to do things differently. The moment you start to get success, the, the, all the thoughts about how an intellectual fraud come in or you, you're bored because it's just how it's done and you're looking for the next exciting project or idea. Correct, yeah, yeah 100%, 100%. Well, I can, I can relate to that. It's very similar to me in, in many different ways. 
So let me ask you this. What were you known for? What, what was the thing that you were known for? Uh, you know, you, 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 there's something about you or maybe even the company at the time that you were known for that had you stand out. That's why brands like Bayer and PepsiCo and Google seek you out. What were you known for? Me personally or, or, or the company? Either or both. Okay, so I think I think the company was was very much known for um, its speed. Like we were we were one of the fastest research agencies out there. Speed and and creativity. I, I would I, I believe we were known for. Uh, people worked with us and they came to us because what would take someone six weeks to get something done, you know, fresh intelligence would be able to get it done in two weeks and have great creative methodologies. Me personally, I, I was known, I think I was, I've always been a great orator, great speaker. And I used to go to all these big industry events and, and speak about different case studies and, and presentations. And I think I became known for that. And, I've, and, and let, me, let me dive into that a little bit. Um, there are many great speakers out there. What was it about you as a speaker? Did you, I'm going to hazard a guess here, that your rebel would come in and you would have, while everyone's speaking about, for those of you listening, uh, Corinne is already smiling, so I'm not on the right track. Uh, everyone else is um, uh, speaking about the standard things in the industry. The rebel in you is speaking the counterintuitive note. Yes, I, I, and I, was, I would always do, I would always stir the pot. And also a lot of, I mean, research is a pretty dry subject and most of the brilliant researchers would get up and speak and they, you know, quite, 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 as I would say, I would call them, you know, dry and, and clinical, etc. And I would get up and just make it fun. And I, and I think that was what was attractive to, to, to a lot of people. Um, yes. I, I Yeah. And the company was called Fresh Intelligence. Did I hear that? Correct. Yes. Oh, that's great. Yeah. The clients you work with now as a coach, tell me a little bit more about that. What can you tell me about them? Well, I don't have too many, Rich, but the ones uh, that, I, that I do, um, uh, high net worth entrepreneurs, um, from from legacy businesses, so it's it's they position themselves as an entrepreneur, but a, a lot of them are from third or fourth generation businesses. Um, really feel trapped, are not happy. I, I feel a, a lot of them need a, and a need to find their true purpose and, and escape to do what they want, but haven't been able to. Um, yeah, uh, one in particular, even I could think of, is actually a corporate client, and I would say that the same thing. She feels actually quite trapped as she's been in this corporate financial services institution for like twenty years. Um, okay, great. So it's interesting because whilst I hear you begin to define your clients by their demographic high net worth entrepreneurs from legacy businesses. And that's a great little niche to, to work into. As small a niche as it is, there are still thousands and thousands of people who play at that level around the world. There's a smaller subset of that who are your people. And the, the truth of it all is our dream clients are the people who look back at us in the mirror. So I'll draw this out in a minute, but it's interesting that you say the word trapped for both of your clients, one who's in the corporate world and one who's running a legacy business that they've inherited and they feel trapped because you're the woman who has this need for freedom, who sought it out for herself in all sorts of ways over the years. So of course, you're going to be fantastic at working with people who have a desire for freedom, even if they don't know what that is in this moment. That's your gift. I see you smiling. All right, let's play. Um, what I'm going to do next yes. is, is, is a little bit of bringing my magic into the room. I'm going to play with all the notes I've got in front of me and see if I can begin to speak you into the world. Um, 
let's play. Corinne, remind me of your last name. Sandler. Sandler, yeah. I'm going to do this as if I'm introducing you at a speech or maybe I'm writing the, the text of your website and we'll see what comes out. I'm not trying to get it perfect. I'm trying to see the picture of you that I fleshed out and see where it lands. Okay, so take a deep breath because I'm going to. Uh, yeah. What most people know about Corinne Sandler is that she was acknowledged as one of the top 100 women entrepreneurs of the year three times in a row. She had the fastest growing company in Canada. It was a company that was involved in market research that she built from the ground up. She also opened it in the United States, had 30 employees, won many industry awards, had top clients from around the world, from Bayer to PepsiCo to Google to Yahoo to Sony. Her company was known for their speed and creativity. It was one of the fastest research agencies out there. What most people don't know about Corrine is that as a little kid, she loved to do things that little kids do. She loved to play soccer. She loved to ride her bike. She was a bit of a tomboy, but she didn't play the household games that little girls growing up in South Africa in 19, the 1970s usually played. She played a game that was called the office game. Sports were really important to Corrine, but what was really important was winning. She loved to win. She was super competitive. In fact, what she really loved to do was to break the rules. Now, underneath all of that, there was a little girl who wanted to prove herself, to get attention, to climb onto a pedestal. And it showed up as being a rebel. There's this deep need for independence in Corinne. And she left home at 18 and traveled the world. She went to university in England, although she grew up in South Africa, and she dropped out and never finished. And all of that relates to Corinne's need for freedom. She loves new experiences, but the moment they become familiar, she's off for the next one. She has this deep need for freedom. There's something powerful about being an immigrant. You literally get to leave your baggage behind. Corinne has a beautiful definition for entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurship really at its heart is about freedom. It's about building a business to create more freedom for yourself, for your clients, for your customers, freedoms of time and freedom to make the difference you want to make in the world. Freedom to influence the people you'd love to make, um, uh, to influence in the world. Here's something else that most people would never know about Corinne. She felt like an intellectual fraud for much of her life. It was like I could never have enough academic credentials or knowledge or skills to believe in myself. In fact, she had a belief that that company that won all these awards and had all these high level clients grew by pure luck by hiring the right people. Here's what I know. That luck is a high level skill that when you're doing things that appear to be lucky, that you've found a path that carries you in a direction that has people say yes to you, whether they're clients, customers, or employees, or even your board of directors. Corinne has a constant need to create, which is amazing, led to all sorts of success and has a dark side. The dark side of a constant need to, cre to create is that when it's not coming fast enough, you can lose interest or even sabotage your creations in order to now have new problems to solve. It's no surprise to me that Corinne's company was called Fresh Intelligence. 
because that's the kind of intelligence that Corinne has. It might not be the academic or credentialed intelligence that some people are looking for, but it's the unusual and orthodox intelligence that sees things that most people cannot see, that's able to interview, select, and hire the kind of people that most people wouldn't hire. The kind of intelligence that can build a business that most people don't know how to build. In fact, what Corinne was known for as a speaker is that she'd always shake things up and stir the pot. In a world that she came from that was often dry and clinical, she was known for making things fun. Corinne's clients are rebels like her, people with a deep need for freedom. Sometimes her clients are high net worth individuals, entrepreneurs who run legacy businesses and yet feel trapped and unhappy and want to escape to find their true purpose. Sometimes her clients work in the corporate world. They've been there 20 years or more, but the rebel inside of them has been constrained and crushed. And now that feeling of being trapped or overwhelmed is too much and they're ready to seek freedom again. If you play a big game and you always have, if you've been highly successful or you're all your life and yet you take it for granted, you almost can't see how or you dismiss the success you have. And if you feel trapped by the world that you're living in right now, by the business that you grew, that you used to love, you need to spend time with Corinne, a woman who helps high level leaders and entrepreneurs regain a sense of the freedom, regain a sense of being a rebel that helped them make their mark in the first place. Whew. Hey, Corinne, unmute yourself now. Let's see how that landed. Wow. Uh, you know, one of the things I have been struggling with as, as, a, as a coach is how to pos position myself. What type of coach am I? Am I a transformational coach? Am I a business coach? Am I a life coach? And, and, and what is my message? What is that niche message? I, I, I think I've changed my website copy a hundred times in the last three months. And when you, you said the, the word freedom and the word rebel and how they, they, their combination is, is, is just, yeah, it, 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 it really hit, hit home that it's actually okay. Like, uh, it's okay to, the reason that I do the things I do is because of, I constantly crave this freedom, yeah. which gives me a reason to create. And it's okay, Corinne. It's how you will eventually find that next path. So it's not just okay, Corinne. It is your path. It's who you've always been. This is the challenge that coaches have because they come, the ones who work with me come from another field. They've had success in all sorts of worlds from business to corporate. And they come in and they can't see the path. So they follow the path that people teach, which is you have to have a niche. You've got to put yourself into a box. Am I a, a corporate coach? Am I a transformational coach? What label should I put on? Actually, you want to let go of all the labels to be you. So I happen to know that you were having a conversation with a billionaire the other day about the potential of coaching. What I know about you is that there are only some billionaires you're meant to work with. And it's the billionaires who are rebels. It's the billionaires who are driven by a need for freedom. Those are your people. When you use this as a filter, A, you will come alive. Your eyes lit up a moment ago as I was talking to you. And B, your people, whether they're millionaires or business owners at any level, they will know, oh my God, now I know why I'm talking to you. Because they don't care. They don't care that you're a business coach, a transformational coach, you trained in ontological coaching, or you got a certification from the ICF. 
They don't care about any of that. They care, this is my challenge. This is my dream. Can you help me? And do you get me? When you start to articulate this into the world, and you'll have to practice, and, and you want to transcribe this, and this will become the copy for your site, and you'll practice saying this into the world. But when this becomes the way that it's just so natural for you to speak it, your people are going to hear that. And people are going to make referrals like, oh, there's a business owner who wanted to work with me. I know I'm not right for them. I've got to call Corinne because this person's a rebel. This person has a high need for freedom. This person's super creative, but then they actually sabotage themselves because they get bored. They'll know to call you. Right, for sure, hundred percent. I, I never ever looked at myself as I always looked as the wanting of freedom and the changing of my journey and the path and always grasping for new things as a negative yeah. and a, a, a limitation. And I steered away from it. And no, by it's the dark side of your gift. And when you can start to speak to people about the dark side uh, of their gifts, they go like you just did. They go, Oh my God. And they breathe this sigh of relief. I thank God. I didn't know. I've been trying to hide from this, run from this, hide it from people all of my life. I have. I, I have. And, and realize. Sorry. Background <laughs> well, look, but don't, don't worry about the background noise. Right. Look, here's okay. one of the things I see, Corinne. One of the reasons there aren't much, there aren't many words coming to you right now. You're a little bit speechless. And this is what happens when we do this. When I do this activity with people, there are no words because it, it, the truth just lands in you and there's nothing much to say. So I'm actually going to pause this in this moment and take you off the hot seat because it's a little bit much in some ways to hear all this reflected back. You, you'll need to listen to this podcast, transcribe it, reflect on it. And in this moment, it's time for us to pause. Wow. And you don't, you don't have to say anything other than that word, wow. I'm going to literally take you off the hot seat. Corinne, I love you. I admire you. It's great to spend time with you. This was really fun and an honor to be able to do wow. this with you. And I can't wait to see what happens when you start to articulate this in the world. Thanks Thank so you, much, Rich. Karen. Thank you, Rich. Okay. <sighs> Freedom. Wow. For most of human history, it wasn't called coaching, it was called leadership. And it's what I love to do, to coach people, to lead people and to mess with people's thinking. If you'd like more of this, or if you'd like to learn more about our community of extraordinary top performers, go to richlitvin.com forward slash one insight.